Golf apparel has changed a lot over time. These knickers seem quaint, but actually, jackets were also considered to be part of proper golf attire. No wonder golfers weren't considered to be athletes for so long. In the early 1900s, the traditional Scottish attire slowly changed, but formalities still prevailed, with players looking like they just came to the course from the office. French tennis star René Lacoste was the first to bring short sleeve knitwear into sports in 1930, with a style that became known as the polo shirt. It wasn't long before golfers took notice. In the 50s and 60s, dashing and fit golfers like Arnold Palmer and Gary Player sported knitted polo shirts that started to showcase their athleticism. The counterculture of the late 60s and early 70s brought bell bottoms, an explosion of color, and fabrics that could be molded into bold styles, both good and bad. The Reagan era of the 80s saw golf drift back to more traditional styles. Now, the continuing development of new technologies is changing the shape, durability, and patterns of golf attire for almost any condition, both on and off the course. As someone who has visited the clothing displays and fashion shows of the PGA Merchandise Show for many years, something always puzzled me. All the manufacturers seemed to be on the same page for whatever style was dominant that season. How could this be? The reason is because these companies typically have really great design departments and they have their fingers on the pulse. They're watching the high fashion that's out there, what's on the runways, what's on the catwalks, what's coming down from Paris, and then it filters down into ready to wear, everyday wear, and then into athletic wear. So if you have a good design department, they know what they're doing and they're keeping their eyes open, then they know what's hot. And that's why you'll see multiple companies pick out a certain color for a season or a new pattern trend. You know, they know what they're doing, so they know what's hot. They're looking at what's happening on the runways in Milan, in Paris, and in London. And of course, they're looking at trends that are happening at mainstream retail. And uh, those things don't happen right away. So they develop slowly, but eventually they get to mainstream, they come to golf. For Antigua, for us to get product to the show, that process starts at least 18 months prior. From choosing the color stories that we're going to use, from using the patterns we're going to use, all the way up into using even the sizing that we're going to use. Because sizing has changed so much in the last five years. You don't see the baggy golf clothes like Tiger Woods wore back in 2005. You'll see it's much more streamlined, much tighter to the body. And so what we're having to use is a lot of spandex in our polys to give it that stretch so it keeps its shape and it moves with you because golf is an athletic game. If you look at some of the forecasters that are out there, such as Pantone, the color forecasting company, every year Pantone chooses a palette of what's going to be hot in color for the coming year. Then they choose what they call an it color or the color of the year. Men have more influence on the colors. Tigua, the really cool thing about us on our fashion side, we have a 60-40 split of what we sell, which is unheard of in this industry. It's usually 75. Golf is not traditionally a trendsetter. We use the uh, high fashion and the trends in high fashion, like right now, patterns are very big. So we're using a lot of patterns that big fashion houses have been using, translated over into the golf side, product that you can wear and move in and perform the golf swing. I think it takes a little bit of time, especially for the more conservative golfer, because he doesn't transition as quickly as somebody who's, say, 22 and playing the game and wants to be, you know, completely on top of what's new, wipe it out of his closet and get something else. You just have to sort of open the player's mind to something a little bit different, longevity, and be able to stick in the closet for a little bit. And that, folks, that's an eagle. Jerry Smith knows how important that is coming down the closing stretch. Is it possible to gauge in some way how much your tour players influence your sales? Oh, absolutely. The tour players influence not only the designs, but how it's fit. Our product and our tour players go hand in hand. It showcases our product, and we want to make sure that the product that they're wearing is what it looks like on the consumer. It's coming across in the cuts. We're seeing things that are a lot more slim. All fitted. we hear is how obese we're getting as a country. Is this counterintuitive? 
No, I think, listen, maybe it's inspiration. The good thing is that there's something for everybody. Everybody's style, everybody's body type, and a good company should be able to cater to a diverse market and make everybody feel good. Technology is very important in sport, but also in lifestyle wear. If you look at Antigua, they were out with their desert dry years and years ago, so they were really ahead of the game in many respects. The buyers come to the show, not only are they looking for great fashion pieces, great quality, they're looking for companies like in Antigua where they can rely on us to have the product in stock. That's huge to a buyer. They want to make sure they're working with companies that get them the product on time and complete. They're going to be on point in terms of trends or what's new or what's coming out, what's hot. But you're going to be able to look at that product and say, aha, that's Antigua. With fashion, one thing's for certain. Every year there'll be a new style and perhaps even a new trend. And who knows, someday, maybe even this outfit will come back into style. We'll just have to wait and see.